Mr. Majewski's Anatomy 32 class lecture, chapter 24, Digestive System, part 1, Mouth to Pharynx. So, the digestive system is basically a network of tubes that runs from our mouth to our anus. Uh, the main components of the gastrointestinal tract are the mouth, the pharynx, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. Associated accessory digestive organs include the teeth, tongue, salivary glands, the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. So functions of the digestive system include ingestion, that's taking food into the mouth, secretion, uh, there's the secretion of water, acid in the stomach, buffers right afterwards, uh, enzymes, etc. into the lumen of the GI tract. Uh, mixing and propulsion, there's churning and moving of food throughout the GI tract, but especially in the stomach. Digestion occurs both mechanical and chemical breakdown of food. So chewing would mechanically break it down, while pepsin that digests chemically uh, proteins would be a chemical breakdown of food. Absorption is the passage of the digested products from the GI tract into the blood and lymph systems. This primarily occurs in the small intestines, however, um, it also occurs to a, a smaller degree in other areas. And then defecation, which is the elimination of feces from the GI tract. However, we should note that very little to no cellular waste from our bodies are included in the feces. It's primarily just the whatever we don't digest plus the bacteria that live in our gut plus any wastes they produce. So let's talk about the peritoneum. It is a serous membrane that is found in the abdominal cavity. Some of the organs that are intraperitoneal that are surrounded by the peritoneum include the stomach, the spleen, the liver and gallbladder, the ileum and jejunum of the small intestine, and the transverse colon of the large intestine. Some retroperitoneal organs that lie against the posterior abdominal wall with little to no contact to the peritoneum include the ascending and descending colon of the large intestine, duodenum of the small intestine, the pancreas, and the kidneys and adrenal glands. The Peritoneum is not a simple structure. It has five major folds. The first and easiest to find is the greater omentum. It drapes across the colon and small intestines uh, much like a fatty apron. It is this area that increases in thickness uh, for men who have beer bellies. There's the falciform ligament that is attaches to the liver and connects it to the anterior abdominal wall. There's the lesser omentum that suspends the stomach and duodenum from the liver. There's the mesentery fold that binds the jejunum and ileum of the small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall. Uh, you can see it uh, all throughout the coils of these areas of the small intestine. And then the mesocolon, which actually has two parts because it binds both the transverse colon and the sigmoidal, sigmoidal colon to the posterior wall. And here's just a picture from a cadaver of what the greater omentum looks like. The mouth. The mouth has many structures that have been given names. Besides the ones we're used to and expect, like superior lip and inferior lip, you also have the oral vestibule, which is the space between the lips and the teeth. You have the inferior and superior labial frenulum. That's just that little extra piece of tissue that connects the lip to the gums. Uh, the hard palate, the soft palate, the uvula, which is part of the soft palate. You have the falses in the back, which is the opening of the mouth into the pharynx. Uh, there's the tongue, the lingual frenulum, which attaches the tongue to the uh, bottom of the jaw, and so on. The salivary glands come in pairs. You have two parotid glands on each side, uh, two submandibular glands, and two sublingual glands. So that makes a total of six. Saliva that's produced by these glands is almost completely water. However, there's a small amount of enzymes in here. There's lysozyme, which acts as an antibiotic. There's salivary amylase, which begins digesting carbohydrates immediately. And there's lingual lipase, which is not yet active. 
lipases break down fats. The tongue has both extrinsic muscles that attach it to other structures, such as the uh, glossohyoid muscle, uh, and intrinsic muscles that allow it to move. Um, however, we won't go into the specifics of those muscles. Also on the tongue are a number of papillae, which are little bumps. Some of these bumps contain taste buds for the sense of taste, and um, others are just there uh, to provide friction on the tongue to help move food around. Teeth. Uh, dentin is one of the layers of teeth, and it forms the majority of the tooth bulk. However, there are a number of layers. The outermost layer is the enamel, sort of the white of the teeth. Below that is the dentin, which is a little darker in color. And then deeper to that is the pulp. It's in the pulp cavity. It is the living part of the tooth with blood vessels, nerves, and so forth. Uh, if you go by regions, you see that the part of the tooth above the gum line is the crown. The part of the tooth around the gum line is the neck. And then the part of the tooth below that is the root. Um, you also see that there's cementin and periodontal ligaments that help attach the tooth to the ovular bone, which is forming the socket that the tooth is in. And humans have two sets of teeth or dentitions. Uh, deciduous is the first or the baby teeth, and then over time as the person grows, they are replaced by the permanent teeth. Um, here's an image of the teeth. You don't need to know what year the te permanent teeth uh, come in, but you do need to know the names of the various teeth. That there are three molars, two premolars, one cuspid, and two incisors on each quarter of the total number of teeth. Tooth disorders. Well, there's periodontal disease. This is an inflammation and degeneration of gingivae of the gums. Also, it can get worse and also affect the alveolar bone and the periodontal ligament and cementin, which can make the teeth fall out. Uh, Proia is an enlargement and inflammation of the gums themselves and often involves some bleeding. And then dental, dental caries, which is basically tooth decay. And this picture shows some really extreme dental caries. The pharynx. The pharynx is basically the back of the throat. If you remember from our talk on the respiratory system, the pharynx goes from the internal nares of the uh, nasal cavity all the way down to just above the larynx and esophagus. However, for digestion, the only parts that come into play is the oral pharynx and the laryngopharynx. And they are involved in the act of swallowing or deglutition. If you remember from uh, our unit on muscles, there are three sets of muscles that help do this, the superior, middle, and inferior constrictor muscles. That's it for this portion of the talk.